Hello, this is Brad Zanders with the Subside Electronics Products Pour Group. And over the next few minutes, I want to walk you through two different features we have on a TKQ tracker. First of all is the bore path analyzer, and then also how to follow up uh, a scan with checking the noise floor, checking the job site for noise. Um, these two bits of information that you can learn uh, will help you tremendously on the job site to help you be aware of any interference or what frequencies might work best opposed to another once you start the job. So first of all, if you go into the menu, scroll down to System, Selected, scroll down to Analyzer, select that. This is how you get into actually running a scan. Now for time purposes, uh, I've already got a scan that I've run. So what I want you to look at here is there's been seven points that I've taken. Now, a common question I get is how many times do I have to run a scan along the bore path? Um, and the answer is as often or you know as little as you want. Typically, uh, people are gonna run a scan anywhere they have areas of suspect. If there's a utility you're gonna be crossing, you might wanna take a scan there, or you could take one in an entry and an exit point. Um, so as often as you want or, or feel necessary, you can run a scan. But essentially what the bore path analyzer is doing is if you notice on the screen, it's scanning the top three frequencies in, a, in this quad tracker. So 29, 20, and 12, it's gonna run a scan for. The reason why it doesn't check 1.5 kilohertz is because 1.5 kilohertz is, is only for what we call passive types of interference. So uh, your reinforced concrete with rebar, wire mesh, uh, metal culverts, for instance. So what you're looking at here on a scan is, if you picture the top line here as being ground level, you're looking for the icons or the frequencies that are lower or deeper. Because the, the icons, when you run a scan that are closer to this uh, ground level, they're gonna be less likely for you to wanna use that frequency in that point of the bore. So as you're moving down the bore path, taking a scan, you're looking for the frequencies that are running lower or deeper. Now for any instance or any reason you saw one of these frequencies jump higher, um, that could be an indication at that point in the bore path that you wouldn't want to be in that frequency. So if you look at this scan, it's showing initially the first two scans, 20 kilohertz was not ideal. And as I moved further down the bore path, it got more in line with 12 and 29. So that's basically how you read this scan. Um, it's actually set up, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and hit the select key and start another scan. It would take 0.8. Let's back up here and I'll show you how, well, if I get to this screen, once, once the scan is finished, the analyzer results come up if I hit the menu button. At this point, actually, I could have, if I went ahead and powered up my beacon, put it in the housing, I could actually hit the set modes button and it would configure that beacon to these two frequencies that were the results of the analyzer, which were 29 as my up mode and 12K as my down mode. Now, one of the other things you may see from time to time, if my top three frequencies are all pretty close in line, it's gonna pick the most ideal. So it could say 29 here, but then it's gonna put up the lowest frequency available because it's gonna assume you have some type of or form of passive interference on the job. So you may see 1.5 kilohertz show up in these results, even though it's not actually scanning for 1.5. Okay, now I wanna just walk you uh, through how to set up a scan that hadn't been started. So if you just hit the menu, again, scroll to system, to analyzer, now it's all set up, now it's asking you for point one. So all you gotta do is, is find the first point in the bore path where we're gonna start the scan. And I will tell you that you do not have to have uh, the tracker calibrated to the beacon to run a bore path scan. So this is an ideal case where you could, uh, if you were going out to bid a job, for instance, you could take a tracker with you and walk the bore path, uh, running a bore path scan, just to check to see if you're gonna have any kinds of interference or what frequency might work better than another. So all I have to do now is hit the select key. What you're gonna notice is it's, it's starting scan one. The numbers over here to the right, they are 
uh, doing their scan or evaluating the frequency in the area, but you don't have to put a lot of weight in those. Just let the tractor run its scan. It'll take several seconds here before it goes through all three frequencies uh, before you'll be ready for a second scan. What you're going to be most concerned with is the bar graph or the graph that'll come up after however many scans you decide to run. So again, it's scanned 29K, 20, and 12. It will not scan for 1.5. So when it's finished, it'll tell you, hey, I'm ready for point number two or scan number two. And you can see here after the first scan that this triangle that represents 12K at this first point on the bore path would not be very ideal to be using. It's very shallow, close to that ground level so you're not going to be one, going to want to be in 12K. 29 and 20 are right on top of each other, as you can see at the bottom here. So at that point, I would move the tractor to the next point in the bore path and just hit the select key again. So now what I'd like to talk to you about is just how to get into checking the noise floor. We talked about running a bore path scan with the bore path analyzer, uh, what it can do for you again. It's just telling you what two frequencies are most ideal to use on that bore path based on the noise in the environment. But it doesn't give you, I've talked about, you know, uh, the ground level of this bar graph and what frequencies are more ideal than the other along the bore path. But the common question I get is, well, how deep can I expect to communicate? How deep can I get information from the beacon back to the tracker. Well, the best way to find that out and give yourself a general idea is to walk the bore path checking what we call noise floor. And that process is very easy also. If you back out to the main walkover screen of the tracker, this actually to walk the bore path checking noise floor, you actually do want to have the tracker calibrated to the two beacon frequencies you're going to use uh, on the bore. Your noise floor can change depending on the frequency your beacon's configured to and the power level, whether it's a low power or high powered or even the extreme uh, output. It can change and it can get deeper, so it can tell you a lot about what to expect along the bore path. So if you're fixing to walk the bore path, check in noise floor. Turn the tracker on. Remember, it's been calibrated at this point to the beacon, but you do not want the beacon on. So you want to make sure you either put the beacon uh, asleep, park it at five o'clock, let it fall asleep in five minutes, or take the cap off of the beacon. So no beacon power is on. You can see I have no sync bars, no beacon battery status. Notice I have a question mark here, so that's telling me I don't have a beacon on. No pitch, no roll. Um, at this point, you're going to walk the bore path, and all you do is again, just like on a bore path scan, however often you want to check the noise floor or in key areas along the bore path uh, is where you're going to check it. And all you have to do is push and hold the select key until a depth pops up on the screen. Notice it popped up 187 feet, five inches. Now typically you're going to see out on a live bore, you're probably going to see that depth be a lot shallower. Usually it's 70 or 80 or 90 feet. I'm inside of a building right now, so I'm getting some numbers that aren't very realistic. But what's important to remember about whatever depth is when you push and hold, say for instance that depth came up and showed 15 feet. If you're going to be drilling deeper than 15 feet at that point in the bore path, wherever you took this noise floor reading, there's a chance you could have some interference issues, uh, difficulty pinpointing the beacon, and so on. So that's why following up a bore pass scan with checking noise floor readings uh, is very beneficial. So you actually can put um, some depth capabilities with that bore pass scan. You know what to expect at certain points in the bore path. 